Hi, and welcome to another lunchtime devotion with uh, me <laughs> and George and Nora. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about this reading in Isaiah. Uh, in chapter 25, this is where we hear how God will swallow up death forever. And it talks about, just before this, it talks about all of the judgment that's going to be on the earth. And it's all the, I guess, the scary part about the end of times. But the best, the best part is this promise What's of... What's the end of, part of times? The end of times? Well, that's when all the earth and heaven pass away and Jesus comes again to make the new heaven and the new earth. He makes everything the way it was supposed to be. But before that, everything kind of has to fall apart and be judged. Oh, so there's why some... did everything have to fall apart but being judged? Everything has to fall apart and be judged because that's what sin does. Sin causes things to to break apart and to die. Uh, and it's a sin TV. Is a TV. All things. Mm -hmm. And sin, that's all the stuff that we do wrong, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and that's why, that's why yeah. judgment will come. Judgment is when mm. Jesus looks at the sin and mm. says, that's wrong, and you did it. But we also know at the end of the time, at the end times, yeah. that Jesus, even though he judges for the sin, we're covered in Jesus' blood. Because what did Jesus do for us? He died on the cross. That's right. And when he died on the cross, all of the punishment for all sins of all time came on him instead of on us. So that even when the judgment comes, we know that we're covered with his blood and we get to live with him forever. We get to be saved. And this is kind of what Isaiah was getting at when he's talking about how God will swallow up death forever. I'll sit up nicer, please. God had a plan. He knew that sin was going to cause everything to break apart and die and have to be judged. So he came up with a plan to save his children, everybody who loves him. And that plan was to send Jesus to die for us and rise again. Right? But how did Jesus come? Did he come all big and strong and powerful? He came again. When Jesus first came, he came at Christmas. How did he come? What was he? Mm, a king. Well, he was a king, that's true, but he didn't look like a king like we might think of a king. He came as a little tiny baby. God's answer to sin and to death and all of the brokenness in the world was to send his son as a little tiny baby. How about that? Yeah. And you know, George, I don't think that's what people were expecting. Because God gave his people this promise about swallowing up death forever way before Jesus was born. So they were expecting a savior to come and be big and strong and mighty. Can you make your arms big and strong? Big and strong. But Jesus came as a little baby. He wasn't big or strong, but he was God's answer to everything. And I think, you know, what if Jesus first came in our times right now, you know? And if somewhere in the world, in some little corner of some little town, a little baby was born, I don't think any of our headlines would change. We'd still be thinking mostly about COVID, and, uh, and, 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 and marbles. We might be thinking about our marbles. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even sure the world would take notice. And yet, God's plan was what it was, right? He sent a little baby, but that baby grew up to become a man, a man who died on a cross. And when you think of somebody coming to save everybody, you don't think of that person dying. And being weak. But that's exactly what Jesus had to do. He made himself nothing so that he could make us his children again. Right? That was a pretty good plan after all. Oh, would you take your fingers out of your mouth, please? Thank you. Should we pray and thank Jesus for that? No, thank you. Uh, try again. Hold your I hands, please. I don't like to thank Jesus for that. Oh, George. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hold your hands, please. Of course we want to thank Jesus for that. Because Jesus 
was the very best gift of all, right? Because now, George, you don't have to die forever. You get to live with Jesus forever. That's a very good thing. And we want to thank him for that, don't we? Yeah. So let's fold our hands. <gasps> Can you fold your hands? Maybe? All right. Dear Jesus, thank you for today and every day. Thank you for today and every day. Thank you for all of the gifts that you give us. Thank you for all the gifts that you give us. Thank you for coming as a little baby. Thank you for coming as a little baby. And coming as a baby. And thank you for dying on the cross for us. And thank you for dying on the cross for us. <laughs> thank you for saving us. Thank you for saving us. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh. Yep, I see that. Thank you. Blessings on your day and on your week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, friends.